Come in. Hi, Pastor. How are you? Hi, Anna. How Thank are you? Thank you so much. Good. Thank you so much for taking time to see me. This is another video. Yes, sir. Good. So, we have some more questions. Um, and this month, our theme is on baptism, which I think is a really misunderstood topic in the world that we live. So a lot of people have questions. So I just took a few. Um, in our reference um, from the Bible, is Acts twenty two sixteen, which you probably have heard of. And it says, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So I guess my first question is, what does baptism do? Well, Anna, that's a great question. Baptism, a lot of people think it saves you, washes away sin. And even this book or this passage here talks about um, in the in the words, it says, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. A lot of people put baptism and washing away sins in the same um, for instance, baptism washes away sin. That's not true. Baptism doesn't wash away sins. How can water wash away sins from, from our heart? It can't do that. The only thing is the blood of the Lord Jesus. So if your question is, what does baptism do? Baptism shows publicly what we have done internally in our hearts. When we trust Jesus as our Savior, that's in our heart. But baptism outwardly shows everyone what we've done. So it identifies us with Christ and it, and it is an obedience step for our, our Christian life. Some people said it's like a, it's almost like putting on a, a uniform for a team. It shows that you are identifying with that team. Mm -hmm. So that's what baptism does. It doesn't wash away our sins, but it does identify us with Christ and, and we obey Christ when we're baptized. Wow, that really answers a lot of my questions. So my second question is, when exactly can you be baptized? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. So if we look in the Bible, because um, that's all we want to do is look in the Bible for what the Bible says about something. And baptism always in the Bible came after someone got saved. So they got saved first, and then they got baptized. There's a couple stories about that. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts about an Ethiopian man who was on his way from Jerusalem back down to Africa and Ethiopia. He was reading the Bible. He didn't understand it. And Philip came and talked to him about Jesus. And he got saved, that Ethiopian man, right there in the back of his chariot. And he said, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart that Jesus rose from the dead, thou mayest. In other words, if you have your full faith and trust in who Jesus is, then you can be baptized. So that shows us that salvation, which is putting our faith in Jesus, came first, then baptism. So that's always the way it is in the Bible. And there's several other people... Cornelius, Paul, many others in the Bible who were baptized, or excuse me, saved and then baptized afterwards. So baptism doesn't save you, but it's just an outward recognition for everyone else to see that, that change in your heart. Right, and it really does show that we have followed the Lord mm -hmm. and that we're trusting Him. So it's a public profession of our faith in Christ. Well, thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing me to take some of your time and ask these questions. And I know that um, this has been really helpful for me. So. Good. Can I ask or add one more thing? Sure. A lot of people have a confusing thing about baptism, and they think that as little babies you can be baptized by sprinkling. But that's really not what baptism is. The word baptized means to put into the water and to come out. So we show that Jesus died and is buried and then he rose again. So that's in the water. Mm -hmm. And that's why we as Baptists believe you have to be immersed all the way in the water in order to be baptized, as the Bible says. It's not magical, but it's the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for your really time today. Your time. Have a good day. Okay. Hello, and welcome back to Verse of the Month. My name is Caleb, and as always, it's my desire to help you understand this month's verse. Let's go ahead and get started and read it. The Bible says in Acts 22, verse 16, And now... Why tarriest thou, or why do you wait? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now this is just after, there's two men in the Bible here, in this story, and the one is talking to the other and saying, Why are you waiting to be saved? You need to arise, or get up, and call upon the Lord as your Savior, and then be baptized. There's one illustration I'd like to share with you um, that I've heard. Um, it's this. 
can you imagine yourself on maybe a, a game day in a sports event? You walk out into the field and you're part of the team, but you don't have any of the uniform on. You don't have any of the colors or you don't have a number. The rest of the, your team is in their uniform and you're not. Now, what, would, what do you think all the people in the stands would say? Oh, why, why is that civilian on the field? Get him off. But they don't know that you're part of the team. You see, baptism shows people, you know, I'm saved. So back to the illustration, how would you show them that you're part of the team? You'd be wearing a jersey, right? You'd be, you'd be dressed out in a uniform. So just like that, you show people around you that you're saved by being baptized. Now, the Bible teaches that being scripturally baptized is this. You're, you're following the example of Jesus Christ when he got baptized and ultimately when he died. You're showing his death his burial, and his resurrection. So the, the sprinkling is not in the Bible or being maybe um, to have water flipped on you. That, that's nothing nothing like that in the Bible. It's, it's only baptism by immersion. But I want to help apply this to you. you know, there's two ways you can apply this. One, are you saved? Like I mentioned earlier, the Bible says there's only one way to salvation, and that's by trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and asking him to forgive your sins. And then ultimately... The second step is being baptized. Being baptized is a good example to your maybe unsaved friends or maybe to your family members. Or it's even encouragement to those that are, are Christians because they see, you know what? He's, he's really saved. He, 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 wanted, he wants to follow God and obey him in this step. So I encourage you, if you're not saved, please get it settled right now. The Bible says it's as easy as just calling unto the Lord and asking him to forgive you. And then trust in that he did. And then secondly, if you've been saved, I encourage you to step out in faith and be baptized because it'll encourage you and it'll encourage the Christians around you. Well, thanks for joining me for the verse of the month. I hope you will continue to watch these and that you will be encouraged to serve the Lord with all your heart. Well, until next time, see you later.